in which you are um, moving through the opening process? Well, we started with exactly what you said. It's a big state. We have 67 counties, and they are all very different. So so what is good in southeastern Pennsylvania is very different. So what you just saw there was a clip from Joe Biden's live stream town hall with Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. And what you can clearly hear and see is that Joe Biden is unable to function without his teleprompter. When Tom Wolf was speaking, you could hear Joe Biden, you could see Joe Biden mutter under his breath to get that back to the top. And what he's clearly referring to, at least from my perspective, is that his teleprompter kept on running while Tom Wolf was speaking. And Joe Biden's remarks in this supposed casual chat are so railroaded that he wasn't going to be able to talk unless the teleprompter was in the exact right place after Tom Wolf finished his remarks and it was his turn to talk again. And I think this is yet another example of Joe Biden's cognitive decline and dementia, something that we've been covering for months and months and months now, and it pops up fairly frequently in a lot of these Joe Biden live stream town halls and in other interviews as well. Biden should not need a teleprompter for this sort of event. This is not a formal speech. When you hear a formal politician speak, many of them, most of them, use some sort of teleprompter with, at the very least, loose notes to guide them. Nothing wrong with that. But this is supposed to be a casual chat between Joe Biden and Tom Wolf, between two guys that have a similar political vision and talking about, you know, what they want to do for the country, what they've done, their plans, their concerns, and how, you know, defeating Donald Trump is the goal going forward to get that process underway. Very easy stuff. This is not a debate. Joe Biden doesn't have a hostile audience or a hostile counterpart on the other side of the live stream. There's no need for a teleprompter. Joe Biden should be able and comfortable to speak from the heart, to speak off the cuff, to speak about those issues that matter to him in an informal way and let people see that there's some passion there, that there's some freedom there, that he's not a robot, that he's not an automaton. And even if you throw aside the cognitive decline in dementia, you think that that isn't an issue, then you have to say, that this really looks inauthentic. That from my perspective, when I see these sorts of live stream town halls, the appeal of them is that they're supposed to be pretty chill. That it's supposed to imitate two friends, two colleagues, two comrades, two allies in politics, talking about the issues that matter to them. And talking about their solutions, the challenges that face regular people in Pennsylvania and across the country. It's not the space to have written down prepared remarks anywhere, but especially just, you know, in a phase of the discussion where there's supposed to be a bit of back and forth. And I don't get the sense from this clip, at least, that Tom Wolf is using a teleprompter, but Joe Biden seems to be. And this isn't the first time we've seen something like this. Joe Biden, when Bernie Sanders suspended his campaign and endorsed him, did a live stream with Bernie. And during that live stream, Bernie made the announcement that he was going to endorse Biden. And he did so in an organic way where he talked about Biden. He talked about the need to defeat Donald Trump. He talked about how his campaign, you know, didn't succeed, but did a lot of good things. And it was pretty heartfelt. You know, it might not have agreed with what Bernie said, but you knew it was coming from Bernie. Whereas when Joe Biden was talking to Bernie, in that live stream, it was clear he was reading prepared remarks, whether on paper or teleprompter or what have you, he was scripted and Bernie Sanders was not. And you have to wonder, are they scripting Joe Biden because of these mental issues? Are they scripting him because he has the inability to free form for long periods of time? Or are they scripting him because politically they're worried about taking any sort of risk at all at any time whatsoever? And rather than have Biden sound like a person from time to time, everything's a speech. Everything's a prepared list of remarks. Maybe it's a combination of those two things. But I really feel that one of Biden's weaknesses in this campaign 
and he might still win. The polls actually look really good for Biden. In spite of everything, he's actually winning. But if Biden really wants to lock in support, if he wants to win over young people and other groups that aren't quite convinced, he needs to get that enthusiasm up. And you don't get enthusiasm with, you know, prepared remarks in what is supposed to be a casual chat. You don't do it. That's not how this works. You got to be a little bit more freeform. You got to put yourself out there a little bit more. Let people know that this is Joe Biden, a person and not Joe Biden, the face of a, you know, amorphous campaign speaking to you. So I think this was just another awful example of Joe Biden's weaknesses, his personal weaknesses and his political weaknesses manifested in a short clip. And you can better believe that the Trump campaign is going to be using this as yet one more example of Biden's weaknesses. But of course, as we noted earlier today, Donald Trump had a massive meltdown because Twitter said his lie was a lie. And I really do feel, guys, that this is going to be a curse of an election for Americans. 330 million plus people, and these are the two best people either party can put forward. I do not envy having to make a choice between those two or maybe having to choose someone else entirely in November. But honestly, Biden needs to work on these things. Some of these things might not be fixable. You can't fix, you know, cognitive decline. But if you want to fix the wooden, stultifying approach of your live streams, Tone down the teleprompter, Joe.